In this tutorial, we are going to see how to make a typical matplotlib interactive. So there are a lot of options in Python for interactive plot like Bokeh, Altair, Plotly. But in this tutorial, we are going to see how to use our existing matplotlib and then make it interactive on a Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab. So the same thing that we are doing in this tutorial could be also applied for Jupyter Lab, but I'm going to demonstrate it using just Jupyter Notebook. So assuming that you have got Jupyter Notebook open, you have to first install IPy widgets, which is what you're going to use internally to create widget. And the package that we are, are going to use in this tutorial is IPy MPL. So it is actually Jupyter Matplotlib. So the package name is um, IPy MPL, but uh, the name of the package you can see that it's a it's a Jupyter Matplotlib, and uh, yeah, we would like to thank uh, the developers of this package for their open source contribution, which we are going to use in this case. So, two packages. Make sure that you have installed both the libraries, and if you do not have admin rights, just use hyphen hyphen user. So, I would just uh, show you um, since I have already installed, then it's going to say that the requirement is already installed, satisfied. But um, if you do not have, just install the package. Once you install these two packages, now you have to run these things in your terminal or shell or command prompt or wherever you have. So first you have to enable the widgets, then you have to enable this extension. So once you have these two things set up, now you are ready to go ahead and then start your matplotlib. So your typical matplotlib would look like this. So this is an example from a documentation. So when you run this thing, so this is how your plot looks. And for you to get this plot, you're going to say matplotlib inline. But in this case, because you want it as a widget, what you can do is matplotlib widget. So once you do this thing, and when you run this thing, you're going to see your matplotlib, entire matplotlib appearing inside a widget. So this is the widget that we installed the first IPy widget. So now it is appearing as a widget. So the advantage of this widget is that you can resize it. You can do it like this. You can extend it. You can do whatever you want with that. And once you do that thing, so the other option that you get is you can pan and zoom it. So let's say now I've got it like this. Now I can pan it. So I'm going to extend it. And then I'm going to select to pan. I can pan it. So I can pan it. Or let's say I want to zoom it for a particular time period. Maybe I'm making a presentation for the executive team. Maybe I'm making a presentation for the business team and I want to just focus on this particular point. So now I can select zoom tool and then I can zoom it. Just Okay. So I can just zoom it. So this is how I can zoom it. So if I don't want anything to happen, just I can just click home. So the entire thing would get reset to the original view. So I think there is something, there is a delay in my um, home. But yeah, so when, once you click home, it's going to reset the position to uh, the older one. So yeah, so that is that is for a normal uh, 2D plot. Um, um, so you just take a static plot and then you embed it in a widget. That win widget uh, makes it easier for you to make this plot interactive. But now what to do with the 3D plot? So a 3D plot is not quite common in the industry, but let's say you have a 3D plot. You can still use the same matplotlib Jupyter widget to show a 3D plot. The plot is getting slight um, delayed to get generated. So once you have this thing, a 3D plot, now you can rotate it actually. You can rotate it in three dimension. So, so as you can see, I've just rotated the plot. So you can rotate the plot and you can do the same thing like panning and zooming, anything that you want, you can do it with that. So the main advantage with this interactive matplotlib package is that you don't have to really learn a new syntax, something like Plotly or Bokeh or Altair to create interactive plots. In a lot of cases, you're going to share this notebook with someone else. So you do not want true interactivity. What do I mean by that is you don't want all the data points in your plot to be interactive. You don't want um, some when you hover it or something to show the data point. All you want is the ability to pan and zoom or uh, show a particular data point within the plot. And that is quite possible with this package itself, which means you can simply use your existing matplotlib code and um, as usual, where you use matplotlib inline for a Jupyter notebook, 
um, that is this is how it would be if it is inline you just have to change matplotlib widget so your dependencies become very less and your existing plot actually becomes a widget and then you get this interactive capability which is quite um, awesome given that you don't have to now learn a new syntax or um, you know you have the ability to share it with your team members and then you can save this notebook and then you can share it with others so so that's that's quite an interesting um, package and uh, the same thing is applicable for jupyter lab also but um, I, i've just demonstrated a jupyter um, uh, notebook so if you want this thing start with this package and as a good practice when you find something in interesting online as an open source project please um, start their repo that is that is a way of you you know thanking them so start their repo go through the instructions in here just um, you can see that their demonstration is on jupyter lab install the package you have multiple ways to install the package so you if you are using anaconda you can do a conda install if you want to just do a pip install just like how i did it you can do it with pip install and if you want to use the development version you can develop use the development version from github and in case if you are facing some issue make sure that um, you have your node js installed uh, you can download node js just from internet if you are using mac or windows you can f download the node js version so even after you have node js if have you have node js and then you have done the um, the the ones that we just did um, let's say you have uh, enabled the extension after even after that if you have some issue please go to the packages um, github repo and then raise it as an issue with um, appropriate um, um, details about what is the issue that you are facing but i i think it should be quite straightforward for you to um, set it up up and running so let us hope that um, you can get it up and running and please let me know in the comments that if you face any difficulties i'd uh, try to help you thank you for watching see you in the next video